Uh, but I'll see your weirdness thus far today, and I will up the ante. In 2008, there was a pretty good-sized Democratic field of candidates who signed on to run for president that year as the, the very unpopular era of President George W. Bush came to a close. Um, the Democratic primary in 2008 ended, of course, with the super dramatic down-to-the-wire fight for the nomination between Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. But, you know, if you go back to the beginning of that primary, the candidate who was the most surprising and sometimes the most fun to cover right from the beginning was a man named Mike Gravel. This is him. And I know this looks like we're using very unflattering footage of him, but I have to tell you, he is the author of this footage. This is his own campaign ad. The ad overall goes on for nearly three minutes. More than the first minute of it is just what you see here. Mike Gravel looking into the camera with a sort of run-of-the-mill look on his face. He kind of swallows a few times, smacks his lips. I mean, it's not like he's like fixing you with his gaze, right? Sometimes you hear road noise, somebody walks by. Uh, but then there, there is some action. You fast forward to uh, one minute and 11 seconds into the ad, by which point the only thing he's done is stare into the camera. But he turns, he walks a few steps, he goes and picks up a big rock, he carries the big rock over to the edge of the lake, and whoop, boom. And then the ad keeps going for a long time thereafter. The rock hits the water at like 90 seconds in, and then like for a whole nother minute and a half, it's just Mike Gravel walking away. Three minute ad. Mike Gravel ran for president in 2008. It's kind of a weird cat. It's not like he didn't know that ads like that were weird. That was the point of them. He turned out to be a lot of fun in debates when he could get himself into debates, but he never really broke through as a presidential candidate. What his candidacy did do in 2008 was remind everybody that there's a guy in this country named Mike Gravel, who once upon a time had a pretty phenomenal and interesting career in U.S. politics. In 1968, Mike Gravel was elected as a Democratic senator from the state of Alaska. He was sworn in 1969. And when you are a first-term senator, yes, being a senator is a very prestigious job, but when you're just starting out, you don't get very prestigious assignments. And so for Mike Gravel, when he was a freshman senator, the one thing he actually got to be in charge of in the Senate, even with his party running the Senate, and so they're in the majority, they get all the chairmanships and everything, the one thing in the Senate that they put him in charge of was a subcommittee on buildings and grounds within the Public Works Committee. Uh, it, it might not have been much, but it was the one thing they let him run. The subcommittee on buildings and grounds. It's the only chairmanship that I have, and I treasure it dearly. That was Mike Gravel speaking in 1971 on what turned out to be an extraordinary night. On that night, Mike Gravel managed to make it one of the most important things in the whole world that he happened to be the chairman of the subcommittee on buildings and grounds. Now, again, this is June of 71. In June of 71, first the New York Times. Then the Washington Post and the Boston Globe and other newspapers had started publishing pieces of the Pentagon Papers. There's a great movie out about this net right now called The Post, which is about the Washington Post and their decision about handling the Pentagon Papers and all the legal fights around it and everything. Uh, but in June of 1971, Daniel Ellsberg, who had taken these documents from the Pentagon, he was trying everything he could think of to get these documents into the public eye so the American people could read these documents for themselves, they could see for themselves what their government really knew about the Vietnam War. And part of his strategy was to get these Pentagon documents to newspapers who were starting to publish them piece by piece. But as they were publishing them piece by piece, they kept getting blocked by the courts and they were fighting it out individually with each new bit of publication, with each new paper in terms of injunctions and, and threats from the administration. But newspapers were not the only avenue that Daniel Ellsberg chose for releasing these documents from the Pentagon. He also went to a number of members of Congress under the idea that the speech and debate clause in the Constitution might allow a sympathetic member of Congress to get the Pentagon Papers into the public record by getting them into the congressional record, where constitutionally they probably couldn't be censored, and the American people could therefore read them. Now, lots of higher profile members of the U.S. Senate reportedly turned down Daniel Ellsberg when he came to them with this idea, but Mike Gravel was this charismatic young guy, 41 years old, freshman senator, he personally was turning very hard against the war. He tried to stop the draft by filibustering the draft to death. And he was the one guy who took Ellsberg up on his offer. They came up with this plan. Gravel figured out what he was going to do. 
He was going to get the Pentagon Papers into the congressional records so they couldn't be censored, so they could all be released to the public. And he had this plan. His plan was to read the Pentagon Papers on the floor of the Senate. Terrible plan, as it turns out. Uh, because Mike Gravel did not plan it right in terms of the procedural stuff. And when he got up there on the floor of the Senate, June 29th, 1971, he took to the floor and he was going to read the Pentagon Papers, but he immediately got shut down because of the absence of a quorum in the Senate chamber. He hadn't figured on that. But Mike Gravel had a plan B. After it wasn't going to work on the floor of the Senate, he got another genius idea about his little subcommittee on buildings and grounds. I'll quote you from the New York Times the day after he did this, quote, the Alaska Democrat had hoped to read the documents on the Senate floor in an all-night session. But he was thwarted when a quorum of 51 senators couldn't be mustered, and the Senate was forced to adjourn. Senator Gravel then went across the street to the new Senate office building, to the hearing room of the Buildings and Grounds Subcommittee of the Public Works Committee. There he convened a session of the subcommittee, of which he is the chairman, and there he began the reading. My favorite detail, actually, of this whole moment in American history is that Mike Gravel, in order to do this, technically had to make the case that these Pentagon documents he was going to read about the Vietnam War, he had to make the case that they were relevant to his committee. He had to make the case that they had something to do with his subcommittee on buildings and grounds. And so he had a witness come in, a New York congressman come in, and he had the witness testify that he wanted to have a federal building built in his district. And Mike Gravel told him, yes, sir, I'd love to put a federal building in your district, but I can't because there's no money, because all the money has gone to this darn war. And you know what? I have some stuff to say here about that war. And thus he started reading the Pentagon Papers out loud. And there were journalists on scene uh, who had seen what he was trying to do on the Senate floor. They followed him across the street to see what he was going to try to do in his little subcommittee. Nobody quite knew how this was going to end up. Or have your legal experts told you that you're safe from any prosecution or injunction as long as you read the, these in your function as a subcommittee chairman? That's, uh, that's a question yet to be decided. Senator, do you have any hopes of this affecting the... the, the they, they, what they've told me is that's a question yet to be decided. Uh, that there is some possibility you could still be enjoined legally. There's, uh, yes. But Mike Gravel, with all that uncertainty, he nevertheless read... Uh, he read for hours. Uh, he intended actually to read a lot longer than he did, but about four hours into it, he became so exhausted that he actually uh, got very emotional and sort of couldn't um, hold it together. Um, still, though, everything he was able to read became part of the public record. He gave copies of what he read to the journalists who were present in the room. And then even though he was exhausted to the point of sobbing, openly weeping in the hearing room, he had the presence of mind at, oh, dark 30 in the morning after all of these hours with all of that emotion. He had the presence of mind to ask for unanimous consent that more than 4,000 pages of the Pentagon Papers should be entered into the congressional record. He asked for unanimous consent. He was the only member of his little subcommittee who was present in the room. He thereby got unanimous consent. He unanimously approved his own motion. And that is part of how we have the public record that we do from that incredible moment in American politics. That put 4,000 pages of the Pentagon Papers into the public record. And this is newly relevant today um, because Greg Sargent at the Washington Post reports today that Democrats in the Senate right now are considering trying to do something like that again. Now, this time it is not dozens of volumes and thousands of pages of the Pentagon Papers. This time it's a transcript from the Russia investigation. This weekend, these billboards went up in Des Moines, Iowa. Senator Grassley released the Fusion GPS transcripts. Iowa, of course, is the home state of Chuck Grassley, who's the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. In August, the head of this firm, Fusion GPS, gave 10 hours of testimony to Chuck Grassley's Judiciary Committee about his firm's role in producing the so-called dossier, that collection of raw intelligence reports concerning Russia's interference in the election and their relationship with Trump and the Trump campaign. Now, as you know, uh, Republicans in Congress who are supposedly leading congressional committee investigations into what Russia did and whether they had help from any Americans, congressional Republicans have largely instead focused their efforts on trying to get 
the real, the real Russian investigation, of course. Uh, in large part, they have focused their efforts on denouncing the dossier with all of their might and denouncing Fusion GPS, the firm that paid for it. Senator Grassley and Senator Lindsey Graham right now are trying to get the Justice Department to bring criminal charges against the British intelligence agent who compiled the dossier. Other congressional Republicans have subpoenaed the bank records from Fusion GPS. Congressional Republicans have forced the FBI to hand over sensitive law enforcement materials from their ongoing investigation that will give Republicans in Congress details of how the FBI checked out claims from the dossier when they were doing their own investigation. Republicans have just been going hammer and tongs against the dossier and the firm that paid for it. It's their main effort to com create a, a competing scandal, a diversion from the central questions of the Russia matter. The problem for them in that strategy is that no major thing from the dossier has been conclusively disproven. A lot of people who are mentioned in the dossier um, have denied that what it says about them is true, but a bunch of what is in the dossier has been proven out over time. And importantly, the company that commissioned it, the firm that paid for the research and hired Christopher Steele to do it, they say, and they know more about it than anybody, they say they stand by what's in that report. All this criticism, months of criticism, Republicans going after it with everything they have. The firm that commissioned that report says, we stand by it. Don't you want to know on what basis they stand by it? How can they think, how can they think with all of these attacks on it, they're still okay with it? Why? Ultimately, there were three different committees that heard more than 20 hours of testimony about the dossier from the head of Fusion GPS. The first committee that sat him down for more than 10 hours was Chuck Grassley's Senate Judiciary Committee. Shortly thereafter, in August, at a town hall in Mount Air, Iowa, Chuck Grassley seemed to indicate to one of his constituents that we, the public, would get to see the transcript of those 10 hours of testimony. The second thing I'd like to talk on is uh, Senate's Judiciary Committee staff members met for 10 hours. I would like to know what they discovered in that meeting, and I would like the transcripts released. Will you do that? Yeah. Uh, the answer is uh, it'll, t I, it'll take a vote of the committee to do it, but I presume that they will. Will you personally vote yeah. for the release of the transcripts? I don't know why I wouldn't. That was in August. Since then, Republicans, including Chuck Grassley, have only intensified their attacks on the dossier, on Chris Steele personally, on Fusion GPS. That has only intensified the public interest as to what is in those transcripts. Today, Senators Richard Blumenthal and Sheldon Whitehouse, Democrats who are both on Grassley's committee, sent him a letter insisting that Chairman Grassley make those transcripts public. Fusion GPS has reiterated publicly and emphatically that they want those transcripts released. Democrats on the committee appear to now be unified in saying that they want the transcripts released. Senators who have seen the transcripts because they're on the committee, who know what's on it, have said there wouldn't be harm caused by releasing it. It wouldn't interfere with anything in terms of any ongoing investigations. But for some reason, Senator Grassley won't do it. I mean, despite what he told his own constituents in August, today he insisted no, he will not allow that transcript to be released. You know, when it was the, the Pentagon Papers in 1971, those were secret Defense Department documents that had been spirited out of the Pentagon by somebody who wanted the public to see them. He went to Congress, he went to the press, that is how the public got that information. The administration went crazy trying to keep that stuff secret, but it got out. In Watergate, it was the White House tapes. Those tapes were the property of the White House, and Nixon did not want to hand them over to Congress. Congress insisted, though, the courts ultimately forced it. That is how those tapes finally made their way to the public. In this case, these transcripts, they already belong to Congress. This fight to get these transcripts released is not some fight between branches of government. It's not some constitutional question. It's a political question of Democrats who know what's on those transcripts, wanting those transcripts released, and Republicans who know what's on those transcripts, wanting them kept under wraps. If Greg Sargent's reporting at the Washington Post today is right and Democratic senators are considering pushing this to the hilt, potentially pulling a Mike Gravel here, they will have a hard time of it. When Mike Gravel did what he did in 1971, Democrats were in the Senate, so at least he had his little subcommittee chairmanship. Democrats right now are in the minority in the Senate. None of them run even a teeny tiny little subcommittee on public works that can be convened at midnight with some reporters. But if the Republicans keep saying no, the public can't see those transcripts, and the Democrats decide they want to go to extremes to get this out, to get it into the public record, 
they have some options. And this is likely about to get weird and a little dramatic. Those ripples will likely spread far and wide. Watch this space. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.